Well, the reaction to bin Laden's death was swift and stunning, even to those covering the war in Afghanistan. Well, mother of three wants to know since when is wanting to take your kids off the school bus a crime? Outside of San Francisco, a cat burglar is on the loose. Yeah, he is so prolific and so hard to catch. The guy makes others look like amateurs. We continue to follow one of our breaking news stories today. Of course, weather being another one. This is a, a pretty good sized fire at the Holly Refinery. Just southwest of downtown Tulsa, it started uh, about an hour ago, still burning. As you can see, we have a live shot there and also a crew on the scene. Saving money on that trip to the grocery store takes more than just cutting out coupons. That certainly helps. But if you're really serious about cutting your grocery budget, it takes a little planning and strategy. All right, the whole idea of Bark in the Park, of course, bring your dog to the ball game. So Definitely. people are welcome to bring their, their pooches. That's a lot to talk about in the next minute and have two minutes. I was shocked to hear those numbers this morning. Were you surprised at all? We can do that. We want to go on the ride? Well, that scary one right there. No. I didn't think so. <laughs> all right. As we mentioned, boy, yesterday at this time, the clouds were dark, the wind was blowing, it was ominous out here, and today is just totally different. When shooting for this story, we didn't have to wait long to catch a driver who didn't belong in a handicapped parking spot. You know what the fine is now? No. If, if they enforce it, it's $500. Is it really? And why companies are forking out big bucks for this new technology. That is fascinating. It is. Can't I can't to wait that. to see yeah. it. I, I don't know much mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Well, the world reacts to the death of Osama bin Laden, and that includes military families. Coming up next, we'll talk with a Blue Star mom from Broken Arrow. This is News Channel 8, coverage you can count on. And first to five tonight, a woman is found shot to death inside her home. Police say her husband discovered the scene just after 10 this morning. That home was located in the 7100 block of East Newton Place. That's near Pine and Sheridan. Investigators say 32-year-old Demisha Hunter was shot to death. Police are working on leads, but right now are not releasing any other details. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Violent crime is among the reasons Tulsa is being labeled as one of the most dangerous cities in America. Forbes magazine ranks Tulsa sixth in the nation behind cities like Memphis and Detroit and ahead of cities like Atlanta. The ranking is based on many factors, and News Channel 8's Kim Jackson says some are misleading. In North Tulsa, Kim Jackson, News Channel 8. By the way, Oklahoma City was ranked the ninth most dangerous. Tonight at 6, you might also be surprised with the cities that made the safe list. Tulsa police are searching for the driver of a stolen car tonight. The person driving it used it as a battering ram early this morning, smashing through the front of the pawn shop. Oklahoma City police are investigating a troubling crime tonight. One person is dead, five others hurt following an argument at church. Police say two groups of women started arguing inside the Word of God Church near Northwest 95th and Western. Also tonight, we are learning a little more about the earthquake that rattled across Oklahoma yesterday. It was officially a 4.7 in magnitude. There have also been two aftershocks, the largest measuring just 2.0. Still to come, a student driver loses control, crashing through the front of a testing center. Plus, fighting addiction, millions of Americans abuse prescription painkillers, but the government says a new treatment could help. Well, a shoplifting teenager is facing a unique punishment. He managed to avoid handcuffs by agreeing to wear a costume and sign. That's convenient since the 18-year-old uh, was caught stealing from a Halloween Express. Dressed as Bert from Sesame Street, the teen is spending several hours each day this week warning others not to do the same. He says he considers himself lucky. I think that it's actually a good deal. I didn't see his lips move, though. More, uh, most visitors to the store agree he got a pretty good deal. Not a great day for a suburban Pittsburgh teenager. He had just finished his driver's test when he accidentally drove his car into a state driver's license center. Not a good thing. Police say it happened when he was dropping off the test administrator at the parking lot. Three people inside suffered minor injuries. And by the way, the teen did not get his driver's license. Covering storms with the power of Doppler 8000. News Channel 8, coverage you can count on. I'm sure that's not the first time that's happened. No. You're learning to drive and yeah. you're nervous. Yeah. I failed my first test. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, they had a hidden that, stop that's sign. That's embarrassing. Yeah, it was very embarrassing. Yeah. I wasn't very happy. A hidden that. stop sign? Yeah, it was hidden. That's my That's excuse. not fair. It was hidden that's behind a tree. Fair. It wasn't fair. You're bitter about that. Yeah, aren't I'm you? All right. I great no <laughs> great weather, though. Ago. Yeah. It is coming. It's come. Well, the chance is there. <laughs> it's always, always got to Always say the that. chance. All right. Hey, we're on the radio right now. I you like know that. that. Yeah, News Channel 8 is proud to announce a new radio partner, KCFO 970 AM. They will be airing our 4 and 5 p.m. newscasts live each weekday. So, hi. 
listening out there, say hello. They'll also replay each newscast immediately after it finishes. Just another way we're working to keep you covered even when you're on the move. Well, we're going to reach the halfway mark of the Big 12 college football season tonight as Kansas State plays at Kansas. Plus, Tulsa's Oktoberfest is right around the corner and is getting some national pub. Starting his sixth season. Hmm. A lot going on. Sports. This is the time of year when all the sports are Everything playing, right? comes Everything. Everything. Trying to finish baseball, start hockey, start basketball. Too much going on. A lot of stuff. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. That's our news. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at six. Good night. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. And of course, we're going to stay on top of this fire at the Holly Refinery, just southwest of downtown Tulsa. It's been burning now for at least 45 minutes there, and, and it's still not under control. We, we're, we're going to stay on top of this. We'll come back to this in just a second. But the other big story, of course, is the weather. Yes, we're covering breaking weather as well. Once again, tornadoes have touched down during severe weather tonight. This one captured by our storm chaser, Denny Bryson, near Henrietta. Hmm, look at that. We saw scenes of that uh, throughout the evening. And here's another when storm chaser Fred Williams spotted this funnel cloud in Muskogee County. Is that the one or is that the one from uh, Danny Bryson? Okay, here it is here uh, in Muskogee County. This one was near the town of Castle. It was over the area around 7 o'clock this evening. Oh, if you look at that, that is so frightening. Yeah. Of course, the big question is, are we out of the woods yet? All right, we're going to head back to Frank now. Frank, uh, let us know there. Are, are we done with uh, the weather? Oh, can we not worry about that anymore? It depends on what kind of woods you're talking about, <laughs> basically. Well, the reaction to bin Laden's death was swift and stunning, even to those covering the war in Afghanistan. This morning, just hours after the news broke, I talked with veteran journalist Mike Betcher. He's one of only a few full-time reporters embedded with our troops. Here's a portion of my interview with Betcher via Skype. I was sort of stunned, and, and still... Uh, you know, trying to imagine what this means in the long run. Do you think there will be a sense of heightened alert among the, the, the troop, the soldiers now? Is it, for lack of a better term, will be business as usual? These soldiers will go on with their mission. Uh, their mission is to find their enemy, which is the Taliban and al-Qaeda fighters who are here, and to allow the growth uh, of Afghan governance in these formerly ungovernable areas of Afghanistan. And that's what they will continue to do. Betcher was stunned by the news, but what about the troops? What's their reaction to Ben Laden's death? I'll share that with you tonight at 630. It's busy. Yeah, with all those people, you're bound to get some lost kids. In fact, just yesterday, the Sheriff's Department said that there were nine kids reported uh, lost. They have been reunited with their parents. But News Channel 8's Elizabeth Kenny looked into this. Nine cases where the parents were frantic for a while. How do you, what's a parent to do? Only takes a few minutes then. That's it. And it could save you from being frantic later on. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Liz. Yeah, Carol, what's different about these cameras, they won't be mounted in the police cars. They'll be worn by the officers, so it'll capture images wherever the officer goes. This is a scene we're familiar with, images captured from inside a police car. Images that only show though what's happening right in front of the dash-mounted camera. By summer, Owasso cops will be showing a much more personal view. They'll be wearing a tiny video camera on their shirts. This is not Owasso police, but it's what the images will look like. We took this video off of the camera manufacturer's website. The dash-mounted cameras are great. They point right out the front of the, the vehicle. However, we've noticed that a lot of things happen outside of that view. A lot of things happen in a home, in a business, away from that particular view of the camera. These personal mounted cameras will go everywhere the officer does. They'll always be there. The cameras are so small you may not even notice them. That's one Sergeant Nick Boatman is wearing on his shirt. Boatman believes the cameras will help make better officers. So you can go back and actually watch an officer on tape um, and either view it as model behavior, uh, praise them, or if, if there's an incorrect Something's done incorrectly, you can go back and show this is this was done incorrectly. Let's talk about how we can fix it in the future. And he says the cameras will reduce litigation. The officers feel like when false accusations are made against them, they have a resource to go to and say, look, I, it's all on tape. Sergeant Boatman told me it's always been an officer's word against any arrestee or criminal, and he says these cameras will show what really happened. There won't be the question, did it really happen? You'll know because it's all right there on camera. Carol?